Is the Moto E6 a good phone to buy? Well, in this video, we're going to find out. Follow me on Instagram at Kevin Breeze TV. Please join the Kevin Breeze tech community on Facebook to chat about budget smartphones, ask questions, and help others. Hi everyone, this is Kevin here coming at you with my Moto E6 review. Now this version of the Moto E6 is the Metro by T-Mobile version of the phone. So I bought this from my local Metro by T-Mobile retail store. Now at the moment, this phone is also available at Verizon Wireless, and I believe in the future, it's gonna be making its way to even more carriers and will probably be offered factory unlocked as well. So a lot of different places to buy it, and I'm sure it'll be offered at a variety of different price tags. Now, I actually got this phone for free at Metro by T-Mobile. All I had to do was pay for one month of service and tax and the activation fee. So out the door, I did end up paying $78, but the actual phone itself was free. Now this device features a 5.45 inch display coming in at 720p with an 18 by nine aspect ratio. Now the design of the phone is a little bit more of a traditional design with no notch at the top, but up top here, we do have a five megapixel front facing camera. And later on in the video, you'll see photo and video samples from the device. Now internally, the phone has 16 gigabytes of storage with SD card expansion. We do not have wireless charging with the phone and there's also no fingerprint sensor. So that is a bit unfortunate. And in addition to that, there's no face unlock. So the only way to unlock the phone is with a pin code or pattern. So if you're coming from a device that does have either face unlock or a fingerprint sensor, or both, then it probably will be a bit of a rough transition moving over to the Moto E6, because I know for me personally, I really like especially having a fingerprint sensor. Now with the Moto E6, we have a 13 megapixel rear camera. We do get portrait mode with both the rear and front cameras on the device, so that's a great thing to see, and I'm actually pretty surprised that we do have portrait mode with the phone. The Moto E6 has two gigabytes of RAM and has the Qualcomm Snapdragon 435 processor. So two gigs of RAM in 2019 is not very impressive at all. And the Qualcomm Snapdragon 435 isn't too bad, but I wish this phone did come with a Snapdragon 450 instead. Now video recording with the Moto E6 maxes out at 1080p at 30 frames per second. This device features a 3000 milliamp hour removable battery. So you can access the battery by removing the back of the phone, which I'll do in a second here. Now the software on here is Android 9 Pie, which is the latest version of Android, and it performs really well. Everything is nice and smooth. And what's nice too is that there wasn't really any bloatware on the phone. I did add, of course, some applications like Instagram and Tutu Benchmark and Temple Run, but really the only bloatware that was pre-installed was Facebook, which you can remove, and the various Metro by T-Mobile applications. Of course, it depends on where you're buying this phone from. I'm sure if you get it from Verizon, for example, you'll have Verizon apps pre-installed. So it just depends on the carrier you're getting it from. And eventually when this phone is offered as a factory unlocked device, you probably won't get any carrier bloatware on it because it wouldn't be a carrier specific phone. Now that we've gone over the specifications of the device, let's take a closer look at the hardware. So I already talked a little bit about the front here. So the display is 720p. It's actually a pretty good looking display and it's pretty crisp and clear with decent colors. So I don't mind the display at all. I definitely like that it has an 18 by nine aspect ratio versus 16 by nine that we've seen with other lower end phones in the past. What's nice about 18 by nine is that it's a little bit taller and narrower, which is really good for browsing the web and going on social media and even for watching video content. Now we do have pretty thick bezels on the top and bottom. I mean, this is a really massive bezel here. It's so big that there's enough space for the Motorola word mark and probably even more stuff. And I definitely would have liked if this phone did feature a notch on the top, especially a teardrop notch like there is on the Samsung Galaxy A10 or A20, because that's really the way things are heading in the industry. Now on the left side, there's nothing. On the right side, we have the power button and volume button. On the top of the phone, we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and noise canceling microphone. And on the bottom, we have a micro USB port and the microphone. So yes, it does have micro USB, another big disappointment with the Moto E6. I really wish it had USB-C. I can't imagine it would even cost them that much extra money to incorporate USB-C into the phone. 
I'd imagine that it's probably like literally an extra dollar. So that's definitely disappointing, but I suppose if you have a bunch of micro USB cables already, then maybe it might be a good thing. On the back of the device, we have a matte textured finish here. And it looks pretty good overall. I like that this material does not absorb fingerprints, which is really a nice bonus. We have the camera module, of course, we have the flash and Motorola logo. So I'm gonna remove the back of the phone right now so you can take a peek to see what's under here. I wish it was a little bit easier to remove this back. Honestly, it's not that easy. And I kind of feel like I'm about to break the phone when I take this back off. I definitely don't mind that the phone has a removable back because that's something that we're seeing less and less of. And I'm a big fan of removable batteries but I just wish it was a little bit easier to take this back off. Now you can see up here, we have the slot for the micro SD card and SIM card, and then we have the battery itself. So technically if you're on a trip or something or somewhere where you don't have access to a charger, you could have multiple charged batteries and you can swap them out to keep the device going. So I'm definitely a fan of that and I can see where that could come in handy for some people. Now this device does not feature NFC, which is a bit of a disappointment considering that the Moto E5 did have NFC. Now I did do a poll on my channel a little while ago asking if people actually cared about NFC and it seemed like about 75% didn't care about it. There was about 25% of people that did see NFC as an important feature. Now I'll probably be doing a tips and tricks and special features video about the Moto E6, so definitely check that out. But there are quite a few interesting features that come with the Moto E6. There's Moto Actions, there's Pick Up to Silence, there's Fast Flashlight, Moto Display, Peak Display, Attentive Display. You can do one button nav, so if you don't want to use the traditional Android buttons, you can turn this on and you can get a single button down here with gestures. But that's too much to go over in this review, and like I said, I'm probably going to make a separate video going over all of these so that you know what they all do. For one of the latest smartphones from Motorola. So here is the box, as you can see we have the Moto E6. So the Moto E6 is really good for watching video content. The main reason for that is because this device actually has pretty decent sounding speakers. So I'm a big fan of that. Of course, the speaker quality isn't nearly as good as it is with the Samsung Galaxy S10 or iPhone XS, but those are flagship phones that are much more expensive. But what's nice is that the speakers are at least good enough and loud enough that you could you know, hang out on the couch or in your bed and watch video content with no issues at all. The sound from the speakers definitely is not tinny. It sounds pretty good. Now the video quality, at least on YouTube, maxes out at 720p, but that makes sense because this is a 720p display. What's nice though is that if you want to, you can crop the video in for a more immersive experience. Now I would not recommend doing anything beyond some light gaming with the Moto E6. So games like Temple Run are gonna work really well. You'll also have no problem playing Candy Crush and other more basic games like that on the device. But if you try to play games like PUBG Mobile, it will work, but you'll run into some performance issues in playing the game. So you can see things run pretty smoothly on here. The game is definitely playable, so no problems there at all. Now, if you're big into Instagram, then you're definitely gonna like the Moto E6. The app performs very smoothly on the device, so that's a really good thing. Pictures look super clear too, so this is a great device for social media. You can easily swipe over and take photos, whether it's with the front or rear camera. And then you can go over and view people's stories if you want to. So everything works really well, it's really smooth, and the performance is good overall with Instagram. Let's now take a look at some photo and video samples from the Moto E6. So I'm pretty happy overall with the photo quality from the device. Definitely nice to see that there is portrait mode for both the front and rear cameras. Now, portrait mode doesn't work quite as well as it does with flagship phones, but that is to be expected since this is a very low-end device. But I'm pretty happy with the colors and the saturation and the overall clarity with the cameras on this device. You're able to take pretty decent looking selfies. You're able to take photos that you'll be able to share on social media and not be embarrassed about. And if you're going on a trip or a vacation or something like that, you can take photos with the device and preserve those memories forever. So if you were concerned at all about the camera quality with the Moto E6, I wouldn't be too concerned. And it makes sense too, because Motorola has a really good track record of incorporating really good camera sensors into their devices, even with low-end phones. Let's now take a look at some video samples. Hi everyone, this is Kevin here, coming at you with a test video from the Moto E6. Let me know what you think of the quality.
let's try out autofocus in video mode. And it does have autofocus in video mode, as you can see there. I did not have to tap on the screen or anything, it just automatically focuses. But let me know what you think of the quality. Hi everyone, this is Kevin here, coming at you with a test video from the Moto E6 with the front-facing camera. So let me know what you think of the quality from the device. And also let me know what you think of the microphone quality too. Definitely interested to know your thoughts about that. So let me know what you think of the photo and video samples from the Moto E6. Really interested to know your thoughts about that. So here is the box that the Moto E6 comes with, at least from Metro by T-Mobile. I'd like to show you what comes included. Now, depending on where you're getting this phone from, whether it's from maybe a different carrier or it's the factory unlocked version of the device, you might get different things included in the box, but this is what comes with the Metro by T-Mobile version of the Moto E6. So we get a micro USB cable, we get a Motorola branded wall adapter, and we get a quick start guide and some regulatory information. So do I recommend the Moto E6? So I don't think it's a bad device by any means, but the budget smartphone market is very competitive and I don't really see how this phone really stands out from its competition, especially with Samsung's recent launches such as the Samsung Galaxy A10, Galaxy A10e, and Galaxy A20. Those devices are pretty similar to this one in price and are definitely a lot better. And it's especially disappointing that this phone comes with 16 gigabytes of internal storage. I'll show you right now actually how much actual storage space you get. This is after installing just a couple of applications and taking some photos and videos. You can see that all I have is 8.38 gigabytes of extra space. So essentially with the operating system and the bloatware and all that stuff, it takes up probably about 40% of the storage already so despite them advertising this phone as having 16 gigs of storage it definitely doesn't have anywhere close to 16 gigs available to the user now that's pretty common with pretty much every phone out there but my point is is that 16 gigs really is not enough i wish this phone had more than that 32 gigabytes would have been the sweet spot and i can't imagine it would have cost them that much more to put in more internal storage I suppose they wanted to maybe limit the specifications of this phone so that it doesn't cut in too much into the Moto G7 Play. But still, it would have been nice if we had more storage with the phone. I would have also liked to see 3 gigs of RAM with this as well, but at least with the 2 gigs of RAM we get pretty good performance here. It's not too bad of performance at all. We'll definitely get the job done for doing the basics at least. And the Qualcomm Snapdragon 435 does perform decently well on the phone, but I do wish it did have a slightly better processor. As for the battery, 3000 milliamp hours isn't too bad. It is a downgrade from the Moto E5, which had 4000 milliamp hours of battery capacity, but this will definitely get you through a full day and then some, so that's good enough, I suppose. So on its own, this isn't a terrible device at all. It's actually a pretty decent device, but like I said, with the competition out there, I think that it is very hard to necessarily recommend this phone over what else is available, but if you really have to get the Moto E6, or if you can pick this up for a really good deal, then I do recommend it. I mean, going with this phone definitely won't be some sort of horror story where you highly regret getting it. But I hope you found this video to be helpful. Definitely give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And when the unlocked version of the Moto E6 becomes available, I will be linking it in the video description below. But let me know if you already own the Moto E6, and if you do, please share your experiences with it in the comment section below. And if you don't have this phone and you have something else, then let me know what you have. Also, let me know what other types of videos you'd like me to do about the Moto E6. I know I really want to do a tips and tricks video, but let me know if there's any other videos you'd like to see. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.